Hi everyone, this is Jack from Maths Forge, and in today's lesson we're going to be doing identifying graphs. So let's take a look at our first example. Here we're being asked which type of graph is y is equal to negative 1 over 10x minus 5. So something you should know about this equation is that if the highest power of x is 1, which it is in this case, then you can't actually see the power. So if we just write x, it by default has a power of 1, also has a 1 as a coefficient, and a 1 as a denominator. But we don't write any of these 1s. So if you take a look at this equation here, the power of x, you can't actually see it. It's not written down. So therefore, by default, it is a power of 1. Any equation that where x is a power of 1 is known as a linear graph. And it's linear because if you were to plot it out, it would make a straight line. So here they've also actually given us what the graph looks like, which is indeed a straight line. So to answer the question, which type of graph is this equation? It is a linear graph. And if we check our answer, there it is. Now let's do another one star example. If your equation has the highest power of x at a 2, it is known as a quadratic graph. And a quadratic graph has a parabolic shape. So it's like a U shape or an N shape. It's an N shape if the X squared is negative, And it's a U shape if the X squared is positive. In this case, it's negative And it takes this N shape here. And if we check our answer, there it is. This is a quadratic graph. We'll do one more one star example. If the highest power of an equation for X is a 3, then it is known as a cubic graph. Now, cubic graphs are very interesting. They either start from negative infinity, and then they have like a bump, and go up to positive infinity. And this is for positive cubic graphs. So this is for positive cubic graphs. But in this case, we have a negative cubic graph. So they actually start from positive infinity, have like a little bump along the way, and go to negative infinity. And this is a negative cubic graph. So in our case, what are we dealing with? Well, the highest power is 3. So it's definitely a cubic graph. And they've even showed us what the graph looks like. Well, it's coming from a positive infinity and it's finishing on a negative infinity. So therefore, this is definitely a cubic graph and it's a negative cubic graph. And if we check our answer, there it is. Now let's do a two-star example. For the two-star examples, we're dealing with equations that have their power as a variable. So the power is actually an x. These are known as exponential graphs. And exponential graphs are very interesting. You see, they always start from an infinity in the x direction and then shoot up to an infinity in the y direction. Um, if it was a negative exponential graph, it would go in the opposite direction. But exponential graphs are quite special. For a small increase in x, you have a massive increase in y. And if we check our answer, there it is. It's an exponential graph. We'll do another two-star example. Here you can see that the power of this equation is an x. Therefore, straight away, exponential. And in this case, it's a negative exponential graph since it has a negative coefficient and it's coming from the other side. And if we check our answer, there it is. It's an exponential graph. We'll do another two-star example. Here, the x actually has a power of 1. However, it's not a numerator. If x is ever a denominator, which it is in this case, it is known as a reciprocal graph. And the reciprocal graph has an interesting look. It has one part of it in one quadrant and another part in the opposite quadrant. And they usually start from positive infinity for the y and finish in positive infinity for the x. And likewise, negative infinity on the x and they finish in negative infinity for the y. So a reciprocal graph always comes about when your x variable is a denominator in a fraction for an equation. And if we check our answer, there it is. Now let's do some three-star examples. Which type of graph do you see below? If you remember your lesson on trigonometric graphs, then here we are dealing with a graph that repeats itself from 90 to 270. 
Now, 90 to 270, this has a range of 180 degrees. The trigonometric graph that repeats itself every 180 degrees is known as the tangent graph. The tangent graph. Um, it is the tan trigonometric function. And if we check our answer, there it is. This is the tangent graph. We'll do another three-star example. Here we have another oscillation that's repeating every 360 degrees. So it's either going to be the sine or the cosine graph. How you know it's the sine graph is because it starts from zero. So if it starts from zero and it repeats every 360 degrees, then this is definitely the sine graph. The cosine graph starts from one. So if we check our answer, there it is. And now for our final three-star example, we have a oscillation that repeats every 360 degrees. But as we saw from the previous example, if it starts from one, it is known as the cosine graph. And if it starts from zero, it's known as the sine graph. So let's check our answer. There it is. And that's it on the lesson for identifying graphs. In order to improve in this topic, it really is just a matter of remembering what the graphs look like and associating them with an equation and their name. If you practice this enough times, you'll be able to answer the questions more easily.